friends, it's Mel and welcome to Vacation With Me. This week we are on Highway 30A in the Panhandle of the Northwest section of Florida. We're having a great time and I wanted to bring you with me a little bit. I'm not a vlogger by any means, but what I will show you is a little bit of what we do and of course what we eat. We do ours just a little bit different. It's not for everybody. I promise you're probably going to see me in this gray shirt that I wear over my bathing suit and my pajamas most of the week, but I do put on some other clothes this vacation, I promise. So sit back, relax, grab some sweet tea, and enjoy a little bit of my vacation with me. Here is Sunday morning's breakfast spread. We, of course, just did some Easy Biscuits some sausage gravy easy out of a pack we've got some fresh oranges apples eggs and sausage we all slept so good last night and we're ready for a big breakfast but it's really more like brunch we love the Grayton Beach State Park along Highway 30A no matter where we're staying on that stretch of road we will come here every day to enjoy this crystal clear beautiful beach the beaches and the water are beautiful all up that panhandle of florida but look at the natural dunes everything is so protected down there it's a lot less crowded than any of the beaches that you would go to it has wonderful flat access out to the beach as well okay doke we're doing crunch wraps tonight you have seen these before if you have been here I got some butter going right here. Ryan's already got our taco meat fixed up. My mom is shredding up some lettuce. And you just start out with a big burrito size flour tortilla. Then you put down a little nacho cheese sauce. About the same size as what a crunchy tostada is. Gonna put a little bit of hamburger meat, which is seasoned with taco seasoning. Then you're gonna take a crunchy tostada Put it right here. Spread some sour cream. I'm gonna use a little bit of salsa instead of tomatoes tonight, because it has some onion in it. Then a nice little handful of shredded lettuce. Now, you're just gonna fold this up and around. You have to kind of hold it all together. And there's always a little bit of room right here. I usually tear up another flour tortilla and put a little piece right here. But I also put cheese on these. And somebody said that your cheese will actually just seal this up if you put enough right here. So we're gonna try that tonight. Then you're gonna flip it over into your hot skillet with the open side down. And hopefully this cheese will seal it up. sealed it. Yes, it did. I got this one flipped over and you can see the cheese did work really good, but when you're on vacation, you don't have your own pots and pans. This is not the best quality of pan and it stuck really bad. So I went ahead and now I'm just going to use like a cooking spray and I will probably just use a little patch on these and not the cheese from now on so this doesn't stick. You can see this is what a crunch wrap usually looks like when it's made properly. These are delicious. We were onto them about once a week, every week there for a while, but that is so good with the hot and the cold and the crunchy all in one big bite. And believe it or not, this was the first time my mom had ever had one. This morning again, we got Granny and Ryan making breakfast. This is the wonderful thing about bringing cooks on vacation with you. He likes to cook. She maybe likes to cook, we don't know. She just always is cooking. She all, She's always good to help, aren't you, Granny? Yeah. She's always in the kitchen too. But Ryan really likes to cook and we like for him to cook. So I'm really taking this week off. Breakfast is ready. A little bit of leftover stuff too. It looks delicious. Ryan's pancakes were delicious. Now the next segment, I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about how we do our meals on vacation. So you feel free to skip ahead if you like. 
Hey guys, happy Monday. We just finished breakfast. I'm gonna throw a crock pot meal together. So this is a crock pot ravioli, easy, lazy man's ravioli, whatever you call it. But I start with a one pound of ground beef. I'm just gonna brown that up on top of the stove and that's the only other cooking you have to do. Other than that, it's a dump and go type crock pot meal. When we go on vacation, we really like to relax. We do like to go out and eat some, but for the most part, I guess when our kids were little, uh, we got used to knowing that young kids, by the end of the day, after being in the pool, on the beach, going all day, they're not in the best mood at dinner time to be out at a restaurant. <laughs> so we got to doing a lot of meals in our condo or wherever we were staying. Now, if I had really had my act together, I could have browned all my ground beef up for our meals this week before we came. But I had a lot going on and I didn't get that done. And we brought all of our groceries with us, even our milk and our eggs and all that. We have plenty of room because we were bringing two vehicles. We could bring a nice big cooler and a big box with all of our food and my crock pot. I don't travel for a week without my crock pot. Anyway, we bought all of our groceries. Number one, it saves time. We didn't have to go to the store. As soon as we got here, we had what we wanted to eat saves money because you know groceries are always more expensive in a vacation town and we just like to do it that's what we do we're used to it doesn't bother me this is not for everybody not everybody likes to do like this when they travel but we're pretty family oriented people and you know if it was just me and Patrick would I do this no when we were young and before we had kids and traveled we didn't go like this we would get up and go eat breakfast and yada yada but this is how we've got to do it and we enjoy it. Now, most places you stay will have everything that you need cooking wise. And this place even did have a crock pot. But one time I had to buy a crock pot on vacation. So I just always bring it with me, you never know. This is a new angle for you guys. When I'm filming at home, behind my stove, it's a wall. <laughs> so you guys only see side angles. You don't usually see me cooking, which is nice for me because I usually look like this. <laughs> Contrary to my thumbnails where I have on makeup and all that, when I'm on vacation, it is nice to have other folks with us, like I mentioned, that like to cook, and everybody pitches in and helps, and it is so nice just to get to relax some and not have to be responsible for everything, you know, or feel like you're responsible for everything. I like to do crock pot meals because you can put them on in the morning, <clears throat> and you can just forget about them. They can cook all day and be ready whenever you come in. So this you could put on early and have it for lunch. This one just takes about four hours. Or like it's probably, it's noon now, so we'll probably eat this one for dinner. So I got my ground beef browned up and I don't travel without my anti no nos everything seasoning. <laughs> it's an all-in-one, so that's nice. This has salt and it has onion powder and garlic powder. So I can season up my meat with this. This is a very nice place we're at, very tickled here. But one thing that happens, um, we did actually run to a Walmart a little ways away and get just a cheap three pack set of pans because bless their hearts, I guess the owners hadn't been here in a while or maybe whoever was here didn't cook like us. But those crunch wraps, that was crazy last night. Everything wanted to stick in these skillets, it was bad. Okay, let's assemble our crock pot deal here. I'm gonna spray it really good with some non-stick spray all around. The last thing you want is for your stuff to stick. Just gonna layer some things in here. This is a 25 ounce bag of cheese ravioli. It's frozen, still frozen. Then you're just gonna take a 24 ounce jar of your favorite pasta sauce, also known as whatever Kroger's hat on sale. Sorry about that sound. I always put a little water in my jar, shake it around and get any extra out. I had this little bit of Parmesan cheese left at home, so I brought it. If you're using the powdered kind, or I guess any other kind, it's supposed to be a quarter of a cup. That's more, but we just needed rid of that. Taking about a cup of mozzarella cheese, I'll probably use a little bit more. Since I have it and since I used more Parmesan, you want to cut that saltiness. 
I also brought my Italian seasoning. I'm gonna sprinkle a good amount of that in there. Then we're gonna put that hamburger meat that we've seasoned with garlic and onion powder. Of course, if you like Italian uh, sausage or any of that kind of stuff, you can use whatever you want here. Ground, turkey, whatever, I guess. Now comes the time to see what I'm made of. See if I can stir this around a little bit without going everywhere. I want to finish it off with just a little bit more mozzarella cheese across the top because it makes it good. A little bit more Italian seasoning makes it pretty. Pop that lid on. We're going to go to the pool, check out the grounds around here. For four hours, we'll have dinner. We checked out the pool for just a minute, but of course we landed back at Grayton Beach State Park. Beautiful white sand, clear water, and the prettiest sunsets that the good Lord has ever created. You can't beat a West Coast Florida sunset. One of the pleasures of having young adult kids is that these vacations just get more relaxing as the years go by. Once we got home, we had our Lazy Man lasagna in the crock pot. I'm fixing up some salad and my mom is buttering us up some toast to make garlic bread out of. Look how yummy everything looks. This was delicious. You would have found this crock pot lasagna in my best of crock pot videos, but I knew I would have it in here. So go ahead and put this one in your file to remember. It's Tuesday and here we've got sausage, hash browns, biscuits in the oven, canned of course, it's vacation. And we got some gravy going down. You guys are only seeing us eat breakfast looks like because, well, we've been eating breakfast and dinner and that's about all. We did eat lunch one day. We eat late though. Once again, another beautiful blue sky and white sand beach day from sun up to sundown at Great Beach State Park. Just chilling, relaxing, resting, and enjoying time together with our family at this beautiful location. When we got back, we're throwing some quick sides together, a box of macaroni, suddenly salad, and some of these Kroger baked beans. These are like the Bushes brand, but they are very good. And the guys were outside with the charcoal grill, fixing these burgers up for us. And we once again ate so good. We try to bring products like those bag of little peppers and mini cucumbers that we can use in a couple of dishes and things like Italian seasoning that can be used in multiple ways. That just makes it a lot easier. But this meal was yummy. I had not had a charcoal burger at all this summer. It's all on the Blackstone now. Today we're in Destin, Florida. We always come down here when we stay in this area and go on a little trip with Destin Snorkel. I highly recommend them. They are lots of fun. We do a little trip with them where they take you somewhere to snorkel and then they also take you around Crab Island to a little grassy area and you get to do some shelling. And of course you always go and look for the dolphins too. We looked around some of the little shops before we took out on our little ride, but here we are snorkeling. This is not far from the Destin Harbor Walk area. There's some jetties right there, and these jetties have all kinds of fish and stuff around them, so that's where they usually take you to snorkel. The dolphins had such a ball. This is the friskiest and happiest I think I've ever seen dolphins out here. These guys followed us forever and our little boat captain was so good to just let us hang out and watch them. The kids loved it. They were just so playful and so excited. There were just tons of them. They were just doing tricks and just having a big time frolicking along beside this boat. 
we went by this little crab island which is sort of like a big sandbar but you can see people like get out there and just be standing and the water just kind of comes up to their knees but they call it crab island because from an aerial view this big sandbar looks like a crab but people will just go out there and park their boats and hang out for the day they also take you to this little area kind of over to the side doesn't that look beautiful it's just very natural looking and again that water you can just see forever but they let you get out here and do some shelling there's lots of little hermit crabs around here we always have a little hermit crab race with them on the boat and then you know you throw them back of course when we come back into the harbor walk area there's tons of restaurants and shopping we ate at a place called tail fins tonight we've got big seafood platter here for patrick with some shrimp and fish i think it was maui maui and deviled crab and then just some fish baskets and chicken baskets just whatever anybody wanted but it was very delicious there's always lots of live music to have fun with just hanging out and Callie and Ryan danced a little jig with the musician there he was having a great time with them and we just walked up and down the marina and checked out shops and saw people bring in their catch for the day we hit a milestone here on our YouTube channel thank you guys so much we're over 20,000 strong here Thursday morning we had another big a wonderful breakfast and in case you're wondering yes I do bring my tea pitcher and make sweet tea when I'm on vacation and we're going to give you just some of the little tips and tricks that Granny and Ryan used to make our breakfast great this week. This is our little helper this week. I don't think we've shown you this package but this gravy right here this is what you've been seeing us eat all week. Another tip on this gravy here that Granny's been making us, the directions on the back, you're gonna bring a cup and a half of water to a bowl. She does that, but you also do that in like bacon or sausage grease. Right. If you have it, if you don't, just use plain old water. But the second step, you mix this gravy mix with half a cup of cool water. But Granny says, Instead of water, mix it with milk and look how creamy it makes this gravy. And if you had some extra pieces of sausage, you can crumble that up in there. We've done that a morning or so. And of course, throw you lots of salt and uh, black pepper to it. Tastes just like scratch gravy. Another little thing that Callie made this week, and we have eaten all but two pieces of it, this is a little mix. I'll find a picture and pull this up. It's that Cinnamon Toast Crunch coffee cake. This thing was delicious. Ryan has been making our scrambled eggs this week. He's been putting a big spoonful of this Duke's mayonnaise in them. They've been delicious. Okay, classic taco soup. I have my crock pot grease. I'm using two 14 and a half ounce cans of petite diced peeled tomatoes. <laughs> Say that quick a few times. None of these cans are being drained. You want the extra juice. <laughs> Using a regular size can of just whole kernel sweet corn. An entire can of black beans. Again, I did not rinse or drain. You want all of the thick, rich goodness. Putting in a regular size can of pinto beans. We love Lux pinto beans seasoned with pork in the south. If you don't have time to make pinto beans, you get you a couple cans of these, put a good amount of water on them and cook them down hard and they taste almost as good as the real deal. I always add in just about a cup or so of extra water because you wanna make sure you got enough. Now I'm gonna take that pound of ground beef and put it in. I drained most of the grease off of it. It's okay if you leave a tablespoon or so. That's just gonna give it some extra flavor. Now I'm gonna hit this with a little black pepper. Because I did not have my garlic to brown up, I'm also gonna hit it with a little bit of this anti-no-nos. This has salt, and of course it has onion powder and garlic powder in it. This is another thing I always travel with. 
The recipe calls for a half of a package of ranch dressing seasoning, but we're going in with the whole thing. It won't hurt one bit. And what am I gonna do on vacation with a half a pack of ranch seasoning laying around? And we're gonna take a whole envelope of taco seasoning. And last but not least ingredient, some diced onion. Then very carefully, you're gonna give all this a stir. This crock pot is a four quart crock pot, brand crock pot, it's an oval shape. I get questions a lot about my crock pots. The maroon one I use is also an oval and it's a six quart. I don't remember the brand of it right now, but <clears throat> neither one of mine are programmable. They just have low, high, and keep warm. Maybe one of these days when they bite the dust, I might get me a fancy programmable one. I would like to have one of them that you can saute your meat down inside of it first. That would be a game changer for me because you know I love not having to do extra dishes. We're going to let it cook on low all day. It's about 10 o'clock right now. Whenever we're ready to eat, it'll be ready. It'll just get better the longer it sits here. And we'll show you some delicious and easy Mexican cornbread when we come back tonight. On Thursday, we decided we would head down to Seaside. This is another little beach community along 30A. They have this wonderful little circle here with lots of shops. And then back in behind there are lots, just like a little town. Lots of little houses that are rentals and things like that. This is little town is where the movie The Truman Show was filmed. Everything is so quaint here. Then alongside the front, they have this big row of kind of permanent Airstream trailers that are tons of food courts. There's barefoot barbecue, which we love. There's hot dogs, crepes, there's anything and everything that you could want here. Um, each little town along 30A, each little beach town has its own personality and they each have their own architecture theme style. Each one is just so different and unique in its own special way. We love just to travel to each one of these little towns and just check out their little areas and what all they have to offer. One thing is for sure on Highway 30A, you are not going to starve. There is anything and everything you want to eat or shop. We, of course, ate at Barefoot Barbecue and Patrick got the pulled pork. That is very yummy. His stuff is just has the best uh, spices in it. Those shells are actually macaroni and cheese. So good. And then me and Granny split this chicken salad sandwich, which was delicious. He told us that is his mother's recipe. And then we also got some of that macaroni and cheese and split that. And we've got some chicken tenders there as well. Hey friends, we've been gone all day long. We took the day and we went to Seaside Beach. There's like a little shopping down there. And we always like to go to Sundog Books because, you know, it's just a bookstore on the beach. It's kind of fun. But it is 7.15. And so we're beginning to get hungry again. We've got our taco soup in the crock pot. Oven's ready. <laughs> this is my favorite Mexican cornbread. Martha White, it's in a little envelope here. And we do a little bit of something different with it. This is also new packaging. So what you see may look different. But there is a little recipe on the bottom, Southwestern cornbread. That's not what we're making though. <laughs> they used to have a different recipe down here for a special cornbread, and I just like it better. We are doubling this, so normally you use like an eight by eight or just an eight uh, inch round cake pan, but we're gonna use this size. I don't have my little measuring tape down here with me. I don't know what size this is, but we're gonna use it. And I've got two packages of the Mexican cornbread in there. We're gonna use two thirds cup of milk. I'm gonna put two eggs in it. And then I just have a regular size can of sweet cream style corn. You put about a cup for each package. So I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use the whole can. That's what I'm gonna do. We've really used a lot of cheese this week. So I'm just gonna throw in maybe a cup and a half of shredded cheddar cheese. Here is what this mixture looks like, if I can get it up here. <laughs> show you without spilling it it has all the seasonings in it 
Of course, if you wanted extra jalapenos or any of that stuff, peppers cut up in it, you can do that. But, you know, my kids have always been funny about textures. And when I started making this, they just liked it like this. And honestly, this is just how we like it without any of that stuff. So put this in our pan, throw it in the oven. We'll see you in a minute. Look how yummy and colorful, cozy, delicious this soup is. It doesn't matter if it's winter or summer. And this cornbread, just try this package. Put you the corn and cheese in it. You're going to love it. Trust me. This would also be in a video I have coming up of my favorite crock pot soups and stews. But once again, that's coming next week. So this is another video you just need to put in your favorites file because this is also an all-time favorite soup. This is a delicious dessert that apparently I must have been asleep or something when this was made because I didn't film it. It's like a Butterfinger cake, but you've heard me say before, we have some peanut allergies in our house. So Ryan made this, and this is like a German chocolate, is that right? German chocolate cake, and then made like a poke cake. He made it according to the directions, then poked the holes and poured a can of sweetened condensed milk and a can of caramel or like a jar of caramel topping over it. Then he just icinged it with a big container of Cool Whip. And instead of Butterfingers, these are crushed up Twix candy bars. And it really does have the same kind of texture and all of a Butterfinger cake. I really like it better because I'm not a big Butterfinger fan. But this thing is delicious and I'm so glad I took that nap and woke up to this. Okay, sorry, the kids just told me. These are not Twix. I don't know why I said Twix. They're Kit Kats. I knew that. I say stuff wrong all the time. You just gotta watch me. But anyway, I'm still glad I woke up to this. <laughs> we spent our final day, you guessed it, Grayton Beach. Look at that morning sun on that beautiful water. I just wanted you guys to see my mom's out there floating, Ryan's snorkeling, Callie's heading out with Annette. This week, we were all in the water at some point in time. It was crystal clear, beautiful. The temperature was perfect. Here's all the crew, except Patrick. He's on the other side of me, so he has his own little picture. We had such a great time. Thank you guys for just indulging me with this video this week. I hope it's actually helped you see how we can do vacation on a budget and really enjoy our time together. We had a lot of fun and we made memories that we'll cherish forever. Again, I thank you guys for watching while I was away and allowing me to have this time and hitting 20 subs. This was such a special week. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next week with some fall food and some soups and some stews and some desserts. Until then, just remember, I always send you love from my kitchen, whether it's in East Tennessee or at the beach.